So that's me. My name is Andre. Uh, I'm team lead at uh, VIU, freelancer and Gatsby and uh, React fan. I'm also uh, uh, Acquia certified uh, Drupal 8 uh, backend developer. You can find me on uh, Twitter using uh, that link. Uh, so um, why, why Gatsby? What's so special uh, about it? Uh, performance. Uh, conversion is the main goal of uh, any website, uh, regardless if you're selling products or you're um, uh, trying to make user uh, do some action. This is basically the, should be a result of your website, right? Uh, and user experience in terms of performance is a really important, important thing. So uh, double-click uh, research uh, found out that 53% uh, of uh, mobile users left if the website load uh, took more than three seconds. That's pretty impressive numbers, right? I like this quote from a uh, core React developer from uh, Facebook. Uh, he says, uh, if the readme doesn't specify whether the fastness is blazing, keep searching. Often you can find a similar library that does the same thing, but blazingly. Blazing means good. <laughs> So what is Gatsby? Gatsby is a blazing fast static site generator. It uses uh, React under the hood, um, a GraphQL, modern uh, JavaScript, and CSS. Uh, it's uh, open source. It's uh, written in uh, Node.js. Uh, it can use uh, uh, multiple data sources. So it can uh, fetch data from uh, CMS, uh, Markdown, uh, Markdown uh, or uh, any sort of uh, API. And it also generates a good base for uh, progressive web apps using uh, those mentioned uh, plugins. So um, here's how static uh, website architecture uh, looks like compared to the classic one. Uh, so you s your web server no longer busy with uh, communicating to the database, uh, processing data, and um, uh, building the assets like JavaScript and CSS with optimizing uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, instead, it just returns you uh, static files uh, right away. So HTML, uh, assets, they're just returned. So basically, that means that you're no longer, your web server is no longer um, uh, process anything. Um, therefore, the, the server load is basically uh, really low, which is really good for uh, high load websites. Uh, the key benefit of uh, the static sites of such approach is that uh, time to first byte is basically close to zero. But how do you make uh, the static site dynamic one? You can uh, generate uh, pages from your data source, in our case it's Drupal, uh, and you can request a highly dynamic part of the uh, web pages uh, through your APIs. So for example, if you uh, uh, if you want user profile or some personal, uh, personalized data uh, based on um, uh, user data, so he has to be logged in. Uh, so this kind of person, uh, personalizations you can do with, uh, uh, with a call to, uh, to APIs. Uh, Gatsby is using GraphQL, uh, data query language from uh, Facebook. It's uh, used to access the data which is imported from Drupal. Um, it also can be used as a REST API sitting on top of your CMS. So basically what you can do is just compose a GraphQL query and it works in similar way to uh, your SQL query, for example. So um, you can request any data you want directly through the REST API uh, using GraphQL. And it also um, has a lot of implementations for uh, different CMSs. So if uh, you decide to um, uh, replace Drupal with something else, I don't know, Umbraco or whatever, whatever open source uh, CMS is, uh, then you can easily do it and still keep your front end part running with uh, changed CMS. Uh, this is how uh, GraphQL query look like. Here we um, uh, take the links for our main navigation uh, from Drupal. It's uh, pretty similar to uh, JSON format. Uh, but what if content changes? Uh, we can execute a build hook 
uh, Netlify, which is uh, our um, which we use for uh, hosting the static part of the website. Uh, it knows how to run Gatsby build. Uh, it also allows running this kind of build through uh, specific by calling specific uh, URL, which is uh, called hook in Netlify. So you can execute it uh, automatically by Chrome, for example, uh, like every two minutes or so. Uh, and you can also execute it by um, uh, Drupal hook, uh, like a node update, or you can also do it manually. There's a module uh, which allows uh, uh, this kind of integration. Uh, and uh, Gatsby team is currently working on uh, Gatsby preview feature. Uh, so what, will, what it will allow to do is uh, to execute the partial builds. So basically when you update uh, uh, your single article, you don't have to rebuild the whole content, which takes, uh, which takes some time. So uh, this is how uh, build hook module looks from uh, Drupal backend. Uh, you have uh, overview of uh, your builds, you have uh, a status, whether it's failed or it's uh, uh, successfully completed, and you can see the, the date. And you can also start uh, a new deployment uh, manually. So this is how uh, Stack looks like. It all sounds cool, right? But it's not all uh, rainbows and unicorns, of course. Um, I'm gonna uh, tell you the the problems which we faced, which I think are like the the most common, and probably will everybody will uh, uh, will face uh, upon the development of st uh, this kind of uh, approach. Uh, so first, uh, JSON API by default ex it exports uh, everything, uh, which is a bit of problem for Gatsby build because uh, Gatsby source Drupal it runs through all of the um, uh, all of the entities which are exported by JSON API and it takes some time uh, so for uh, really big websites it can be up to 20 minutes which is a big problem of course for a build uh, and there's uh, data exported which you definitely not need uh, in using uh, Gatsby so for example um, JSON API returns rich text formats why do you need formats, right? Um, the second problem is that links are uh, exported in a Drupal format, which is not what Gatsby expects. Gatsby expects a full URL. So how, how did we solve this? Or how can uh, you solve this? Is, uh, uh, you can use built-in interface to reduce the amount of data exported by uh, JSON API. Um, it will be just less and it will take uh, less time to uh, process. So Gatsby source Drupal doesn't have to uh, go through all of this unnecessary data to collect them into Gatsby during the build process. Um, you can also um, use filters. Uh, I would prefer even using both of them if you have something to filter. Uh, both Gatsby source Drupal and uh, JSON API module has a pretty decent uh, documentation about this. So you can uh, look it up, how to use filters. And for the second, uh, for the second problem, you can use a URL enhancer. Um, it's uh, basically a patch for a JSON IP extras module. So in, um, uh, again, in admin interface of a JSON API, you can uh, select how to, uh, how to export the link. So you can use this enhancer and, and then it will return the absolute URL, which can be understood by Gatsby. Um, so Gatsby source Drupal, um, in comparing to JSON API, uh, in combination with JSON API, it cannot fetch um, some resources as anonymous. So JSON API just doesn't expose them. So for example, menus. I don't know why it's done, but menus it doesn't seem like that much sensitive, but uh, anyways, uh, you cannot access it just directly. So uh, as a solution, you can use uh, key aus module um, in combination with Gatsby source Drupal version 3.9.0 and higher. Uh, so in 
what key OWASP module allows you to do is uh, it allows you to authenticate user based on uh, the key. So you, you generate the key for uh, each uh, for some particular user. Uh, you can give it a, a, a role or something. Um, then you can use this key as a get parameter to your request or either with um, a header request. And then you will be authenticated uh, to Drupal. So that's how you authenticate uh, Gatsby to Drupal. So I've made a contribution to uh, Gatsby source Drupal, which allows to specify this uh, get request, uh, uh, well, the, the key as, as, a, as a get parameter or the header request. Uh, you, can, uh, you can place uh, authentication key in your environment file, um, which is, uh, uh, well, you can push it uh, to the repo, and it's, uh, well, it's pretty much secure because uh, only Netlify will be executing your build, so only Netlify will know this, this key. Uh, so Gatsby is uh, relatively young, and uh, at some point you might uh, spot uh, functionality that it's that is missing in, in Gatsby core or some of its uh, plugins so um, uh, and you might be uh, really needing that the, this kind of uh, functionality or feature so I encourage you to contribute to Gatsby uh, to uh, make it better together uh, by the way you will get a free swag uh, out of Gatsby they ship uh, internationally for free uh, things like a t-shirt baseball cap I think it's pretty cool. And uh, in the meantime, however, uh, there might be some situations that you're, um, you cannot wait for an approval from Gatsby and uh, wait until your pull request got merged. So in the meantime, in PM tip, you can use uh, link module alias to overwrite um, the um, uh, core packages with your forked one. So your fork uh, repo, you made your changes, and then you just create a sim link with uh, this uh, NPM package. Another problem is uh, we wanted to uh, use web forms uh, which, which will work with uh, Drupal web forms. Uh, and we wanted a really simple solution. So um, uh, when you do display the, the web form, you also need to update your cross request forgery token. Every time the, the web form is displayed, you need to uh, renew your cross request forgery token to avoid this kind of attacks. And as a solution, um, uh, we found out the uh, React to JSON schema form uh, in combination with uh, matching Drupal uh, module. So JSON, uh, a React JSON schema form component uh, accepts the form structure in a JSON format, which is also generated by the module. And by the way, module also uh, generates a cross request forgery token for you. The module is still, uh, the Drupal module is still in uh, development. So in, uh, well, of course, uh, any contributions are welcomed. Um, that's a bit similar problem to uh, what we have with links. So uh, Gatsby Image Sharp, uh, which I will mention later, um, it knows how to work with uh, standard Drupal image field, but with media, well, media is uh, still returned in, uh, in, an, in another format. And again, you can use uh, Enhancer for media entities, uh, so it's understood by uh, Gatsby. Yeah, I would like to show you some demo. So this is a, a website which we built for uh, Dash Hospital Association. This is a pretty uh, uh, simple website, but it's, uh, it's, it's fast because of uh, mentioned techniques. Um, Gatsby does a pretty neat uh, image optimizations. So if I, uh, what I mentioned before, the Gatsby Image Sharp plugin, uh, what it does is basically first show you the blurred image uh, and then when the image is there, when it's ready, you, it just automatically switches with uh, a normal image. So you see that images were blurred, and now they are replaced with uh, uh, nice images. Uh, when the page is loaded, uh, Gatsby also does uh, some prefetching. So if I um, 
open my network. Not so handy from here. And uh, it tries to prefetch all the links which are in the viewport at the moment. So if I start scrolling down, you see that prefetch requests are appearing in the network. And basically, these pages will be served instantly. So if I go through the website, it's really fast. Filtering also works pretty instant. The only images are still loaded because you don't, you don't want to load all the images while they're not displayed. But still with uh, um, Gatsby Image Sharp, this is not a problem. We also have uh, a written list functionality, which is a really nice user experience because it works um, without any delay. So you can, uh, from our view, you can mark some um, uh, articles to be added to the written list. And then when you go to written list, they're there. Also instantly delete them from the list. Also search works pretty neat. It's really fast with the uh, life of the complete feature. So if I start typing, then you see results are filtered right away, and it's pretty much almost instant. Um, yeah, I also wanted to show you the Webpack. Uh, Webpack Bundle Analyzer. Which is basically um, which shows your all your assets and their sizes. So when I hover over the uh, any uh, library or package, it shows the the size of it. So you can analyze it and uh, afterwards optimize it. This is, by the way, a development build. So this is uh, uh, all all of these assets are not uh, minified yet. So they will be minified on uh, Gatsby build. Um, where's my mouse? There's also um, a local explorer to your GraphQL. Um, so you can explore all the data which uh, Gatsby got from Drupal. Uh, once you run Gatsby develop, which, is, which basically spins up your uh, development version of, of your uh, front-end application, um, there you can play with uh, with the data and query just to see what kind of fields do you have. So it does have uh, autocomplete. And then you can see the, the data right away. Um, I also wanted to show you a bit of how the code structure looks like. Oh. Is gone somewhere. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> there it goes again. Yeah, better to do it like this. Um, so basically, you have um, a couple of folders. There's your node modules uh, folder, which uh, you should exclude always from repo, of course. This is just uh, your libraries folder, uh, similar to a vendor folder in Drupal. Um, there's uh, uh, plugins, which you can uh, use for, uh, for example, altering the, the, the input from Drupal on the, on the build time. Uh, there's your public folder, which actually uh, your website is served from. So all the static assets, all the static HTML will be compiled to uh, that one. That's a lot, a bunch of files. Um, and there's uh, the source folder, which basically contains all your components, which are React components, and uh, there you do uh, most of the job. And this is, by the way, uh, how, how it looks like inside. So we have uh, an article filter list. Um, so 
uh, the, the data for, for filters is coming from uh, GraphQL, as far as you can see here. And then you just uh, uh, pass it here to your component and uh, output it, output the filters. All right. Yeah, so next to uh, progressive web apps. So what's, what's uh, actually the progressive web app is? So progressive web app is a hybrid of a web page and mobile app. It looks like a, a, a native, native app inside, but it has a reduced set of functionalities. Um, oh, where's my mouse again? Okay, maybe it works from here. So, yeah, this is an example of uh, my personal project, which is still in development, really in development. <laughs> so when you go to a website, you browse, you see like some data is coming. You can, what you can do is, with Progressive Web App is you can add it to your home screen. It will look uh, like, an, uh, yeah, like this one. And it doesn't have uh, uh, address bar, so it has this native app feeling. Uh, there are a couple of links uh, which will uh, give you an idea of what's possible to do with uh, um, uh, what are your browser is capable of, and also some uh, examples of progressive web apps. So uh, here's how my mobile browser looks like. That's, this is only a part of the list, but it clearly shows that it has a reduced set of functionality. So for example, um, iOS doesn't allow to access your contacts and, and SMSs, this, this kind of stuff, uh, for uh, privacy reasons, probably. Um, and uh, the, right next to it, you can see that uh, vibration, uh, vibration feature of your phone. It can be still, uh, well, for example, Chrome is, is, uh, is pretty much perfectly supports it. So you can use it uh, uh, in your progressive web apps. So where to start with uh, a progressive web app? You should first create a manifest file. Uh, then you implement a service worker. Uh, make sure you have uh, all the icons for all the uh, resolutions which you want to support. Um, you can also add optional fancy features like uh, splash screens. So when your uh, uh, app is loading, then you can display the uh, splash screen with a nice logo or something like this. And what I feel mostly excited about, uh, now you can even convert your progressive web app to a native app just for free. And you can publish it on Google, Windows, Apple stores, just like that. So you can use uh, this resource uh, to generate the package. Also, uh, publishing the package itself would be uh, much more complicated than this. But uh, it should work. So this is how your uh, manifest file looks like. This is uh, really basic information about uh, your app um, with a list of icons for all the resolutions. Uh, what's interesting here is uh, display property. So when you set it to standalone, uh, it will remove the address bar, giving that app uh, really like a native app feeling. And what is a service worker? Service worker is a piece of JS that runs in a separate uh, thread. So it can be used as a background heavy lifter. So for example, if you, if you don't need, uh, if, if you need to make um, some sort of calculations or some data processing, which takes some time, and you're not necessarily needed for um, uh, before your uh, page loads for for your uh, for your view, basically, uh, you can you can execute it in the, in a the background. Uh, service workers are event based. Uh, there's install, activate, update, fetch uh, events. Fetch is actually uh, the event which you can. Um, really alter what, um, what does your um, network uh, give to your browser. So for example, if you request an image uh, from the network, you can say, okay, give uh, the cached image instead and do not request a network, which allows for uh, offline experience. Um, 
Yeah, then uh, uh, service worker do not work without HTTPS. So that's pretty, that's pretty obvious, I guess. You should have HTTPS on your website. Um, they don't have access to uh, your window uh, variable or your DOM. Um, they communicate with, uh, with a window with a post message method. And events, of course, they can uh, respond to events. Uh, so the, the link below uh, contains implementation of uh, most uh, most uh, uh, use cases for service workers. So you can look at this uh, implementations just to have an idea what it can do, uh, what can be used for, and you know play with it. So uh, here's how a service worker might look like. This is a separate file. You still have to uh, uh, say that. It has to be used in your application. Uh, here we have uh, two events. We have uh, an install and fetch event. So um, uh, install event is uh, uh, only fired once on the first, uh, 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 on first load of your, of your web page. Uh, here we want to say, OK, I, want, I would like to pre-cache some resources. So they can be then uh, returned from cache. Service worker, by the way, it has uh, uh, pretty decent. Well, all of the uh, browsers, all of the modern browsers, they have uh, really nice support for a cache mechanism, which is really powerful. And in a fetch event, we can say, okay, if there's a cached copy, we can uh, uh, return the cached cached copy. And after uh, we respond with uh, uh, with what we we have cached. We can also say, OK, uh, hold on, keep, keep it running until we um, uh, finished with fetching a new version. So basically, what, what happens is first you, you serve your, uh, for example, image out of cache and it gets outdated. Uh, but you somehow need to uh, update the image, right? So this is uh, what it can be used for. Another uh, option to uh, start with uh, uh, service workers is to use uh, Workbox. Workbox is uh, a library of uh, service workers uh, related functionality. Uh, it's implemented by Google and some other contributors. And we found it pretty, pretty neat. So we can rewrite our um, previous example just with two lines of code. Nice, right? So you can uh, use different caching strategies uh, you can uh, pass some parameters uh, to it. Uh, it's pretty customizable. So a quick uh, recap. Yeah, Gatsby is uh, really fast. And Drupal is extremely powerful in, in terms of uh, content management. Uh, progressive web apps uh, techniques can, you, uh, can help you to improve your mobile UX. And altogether, uh, I believe that it truly uh, allows you to create a really amazing uh, user experience. I encourage you to explore and experiment with uh, all these techniques, and trust me, it's a lot of fun. Thanks. I believe we have some time for questions. Yep. Hello. Yeah, it's a question about search. And uh, did you use a client side search or no? Was there no, a it's a, it's a, a solar based solution. Solar based solution. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, using the reactive uh, search. Uh, it's React component, uh, which basically every time you you uh, you uh, th this is by the way this is cloud uh, hosting uh, solar instance. But it works uh, pr pretty well. So, so I'm understanding the flow is that content is in Drupal and the content editor decides yeah, basic how, how to index the content. Drupal sends to Solar and then GraphQL grabs exactly. the data from. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You have uh, like your in the, uh, uh, well Solar indexing module for Drupal. Okay. So basically, you say like which fields uh, of Drupal I should index and put to Solar, and then they are in the Solar yeah. index.
Yeah, and uh, another question, so I apologize if you already mentioned it, and regarding your build flow, per my understanding, I did a go to Drupal, updates article, Drupal sends requests to Netlify, and Netlify rebuilds the whole uh, website. Exactly, okay. exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. It does it, it, does it uh, at the moment, but as, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Gatsby team is working on a yeah. preview feature, which will allow partial builds, so not all the content will be rebuilt, but only the, yeah. the part of it which you modified. Yeah. Got it. And uh, from my understanding, uh, eventually we go end up with just static websites and no interaction between browser and Drupal website. Drupal is no, only for no. They are uh, they are uh, totally different uh, web servers, uh, and also we we tend to keep it in uh, even in uh, separate repos. Yeah, got it. Okay, thanks. Yep. No more questions. Uh, you mentioned that for mobile experience, uh, you can use progressive web apps. Is there anything you can suggest about the desktop experience? S something similar, like create an application from the web page, which is made like with... Uh, yeah, there, there is... Uh, well, basically, if you need um, a desktop app, there is an uh, Electron.js uh, uh, library for it. So you can uh, build... Um, well, one guy built uh, Windows 95 with Electron app, so it it works pretty slow, but it still has like all the standard uh, Windows 95 uh, features. So you can uh, play play old games. Uh, you can open the Notepad, whatever calculator. So uh, yeah, he wrote it uh, with Electron app. So if you need a desktop app, you can uh, uh, look at something uh, like Electron. And there's uh, I know that um, Electron. Uh, by default, it's not not using React, but uh, well, some some contributors they made a package which allows to use React components for building Electron apps as well. No more questions. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs>